I want to talk about the four pieces of gear that did me dirty on the Colorado Trail. The Colorado Trail only took me a month to complete, but it felt like by the end of that trip, all of my gear was breaking. It was driving me crazy, especially because on the Appalachian Trail, which was a six month long journey for me, I felt like my gear held up really well. So, I mean, if you guys watch my channel, you know that I have switched to some more lightweight gear than what I had on the AT. So I guess what you kind of give up in getting like more lighter weight gear is sometimes the durability of the gear. So I don't know, I was feeling really frustrated. So I just wanted to share with you guys which pieces of gear really didn't hold up on this through hike to see if anyone could commiserate or let me know in the comments which pieces of gear you recently used on a long hike that did not hold up very well. All right, this first piece of gear was a little bit expected. This was a new piece of gear for me within the last few months, and I had kind of heard that this piece of gear isn't the most durable that you will find. And this piece of gear, drum roll please, is my Nemo Tensor sleeping pad. This one, honestly, I was so sad about it because this is the most comfortable sleeping pad that I have ever slept on in my life. I sleep so well on it. I get such amazing sleep on the sleeping pad out in the backcountry. And before this, I had the Neo, I had the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite Women's, which is something I also got post AT. And I just, I couldn't sleep on that one. I just do not find that pad to be comfortable whatsoever. But unfortunately, I've just learned the hard way that it's a lot more durable than the Nemo Tensor. So I had heard mixed things about the durability of the sleeping pad. Like I had some people say to me, oh, it got multiple holes. At, like once I took it on a through hike and I had other people say like, no, it's lasting me for ages. It's wonderful, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't really know what to expect, but I had kind of said when I got this, I was like, I hope that it holds up for the Colorado Trail, but we'll see. And about two and a half weeks in, this baby sprung a leak and it was on the top of the pad, kind of like in this area where I would be sleeping on one side of the pad. It was a tiny like pinprick sized hole. So luckily it was a very slow leak. So it's like I blow it up, I go to sleep and then in the morning it would be halfway deflated. So it's not like my sleeping pad like totally popped. It wasn't like it was unusable. It wasn't a huge deal, but like I just bought this pad in March or April before the CT. I had maybe used it the equivalent of two or two and a half weeks for sleeping like over backpacking trips. Like I took it for a week on the foothills trail. I took it for some weekend backpacking trips, adding up to about two or two and a half weeks of use before I got on the CT and this popped within two and a half weeks. So that says to me, this popped after about a month of use. So really big bummer, but I'm not quite sure what I wanna do about it yet. So I got this pad at REI. So it's only been a few months. I'm gonna take it back. I'm gonna probably get the same pad, honestly. I know that sounds silly because like now we know it's not super durable, right? But I think I'll just keep getting it at REI and if it pops again, I'll get a new one because I'm telling you guys, my sleep on this thing when it works properly <laughs> is incredible. So I don't know, I've, I've used several other sleeping pads before. This is my favorite by far. So I'm just, even with, this, with the leak, I'm having a hard time letting it go. If you used a Nemo Tensor in the past, I'd be curious about your experience with the durability of the pad. And by the way, it comes with a little field repair kit, basically two patches that you can stick on in case you spring, spring a leak. I did use one of the patches and it started leaking again. It lasted like one night where it didn't leak and then the second night it started leaking again. So those patches don't really work very well. I've also heard there's a special kind of glue that you can get at outdoor source to repair sleeping pads when you're out in the back country. So that might also be something like if I do end up getting another one of these pads, I think I will invest in some of that glue and take it with me on backpacking trips just in case this happens again. 
I mean, I'm willing to give it a second try because of how comfortable I find it, but I do think if I get another one and the same thing happens, I'll probably have to give up on this pad. So if you have a pad that you really love, let me know what it is down in the comments. As I said, I really don't like the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite, so don't comment that one. <laughs> Item number two, one of my ever new bags. So I use these because the threading on the end fits well with the Sawyer Squeeze, which is what I use for a water filter. So these are water bags. You just fill them up, you hook them to the Sawyer Squeeze, and you squeeze them down the squeeze, and out comes clean water, right? So I use these because the Sawyer Squeeze bags pop so darn quickly, and these tend to be more durable and last longer. But I will say the first one of these that I ever purchased was when I was on the AT, and that bag lasted me half of the AT, and then it lasted me for like two years after that before it sprung a leak. But I have found with the last few of these that I've bought, they have not lasted long at all, like maybe a few months tops before they spring a leak. So I, I took two of these bags with me on the CT, one I bought in the spring before the Foothills Trowel, one I bought this summer before the CT, and the one, I think the one that I've had for longer, I think the one that I got before the Foothills Trowel, sprung a leak, got a hole, and so it was on a day that I had to do a longer water carry. I had it in my bag and ended up like leaking a bunch of water out over my bag. So that was a huge bummer, but also it's just a bummer to me that these aren't lasting as long as they used to. So I don't, maybe that's user error, but I don't really think so. I don't know if they're making these a little cheaper these days. I don't know what the deal is, but same thing. If you use these bags, I would be really curious about your experience. And if you have seen a difference within the last couple of years of getting these bags and versus prior to that. But luckily the bag was still usable. It was just a small leak. I just had to be really careful if I was gonna do a water carry with it because like, Obviously you don't want water dripping all over the back of your bag and the back of you and getting everything wet and whatever. So that was a huge bummer. The other bag did hold up without springing a leak. So that was a positive, but I just, it's, it's again, I don't know what a better alternative would be because the platypus bags don't have the correct th threading for the Sawyer. The Sawyer bags are even worse than these Evernew bags. So if you have a better alternative that you like to use that fits with the threading of the Sawyer Squeeze, please let me know in the comments. Item number three was also a real heartbreaker, you guys. <sighs> it was my Gossamer Gear Mariposa backpack, which if you guys watch my channel, you know that I freaking love this backpack. It's pretty lightweight, it's under two pounds. It's uh, 60 liter capacity, including all the pockets. I feel like it's the perfect size for me. I find it to be really, really comfortable. And the only complaint I've had about this pack in the past is that it uh, causes you to have a lot of back sweat because it's not super breathable on your back. But I can deal with that because I think the, the pack is so freaking comfortable. But unfortunately, this is something that can be fixed, which is, thank goodness, but my chest strap, the second to last day that I was out in the CT, the buckle busted in half. So you see this little piece? This is where it goes in, right? Not attached to anything any longer. It's supposed to be attached to this. So I basically, for the last two days that I was on the CT, I had to... I had to tie my chest strap around my chest and then I kept getting stuck in my backpack. So every time I would want to take my backpack off, it would be a huge process. I'd have to like pull it up over my head. Thank goodness. I was only, I only had like two days to do this. So I didn't have much food in there. My pack wasn't super heavy, but it was a huge pain. And I definitely almost got stuck in there a couple of times, but I couldn't think of a better solution because like I need to have that tight, right? And something that makes me kind of mad about this is that Ibex has the same exact backpack and this has happened to her once before. She got a new clip to replace it. And now the one that she has replaced it with, which was only last summer, has already started to break. So these are super flimsy. Like it's obviously a very like flimsy cheap material. And I would say because Ibex has had that problem also, she reached out to the company, they sent her a new clip, 
Like, this has got to be a more widespread problem, and it's got to be a problem that Gossamer Gear knows about. So why aren't they fixing the problem? Like, that kind of makes me mad because they know that a ton of people are through hiking with their backpacks and doing much longer trails than the CT, right? Going out on the AT, going out on the PCT, going out on the CDT. So what if your gear is breaking on those longer trails? What if you're far from a town? Like they obviously know it's a problem and they haven't corrected it. So I kind of want to know what the deal is. Like, why haven't they fixed the problem? I will say I was impressed with their customer service because I reached out, I let them know what happened and I asked what clip on their website I needed to purchase to replace it. And apparently those clips are sold out until like the end of the year, which is also a problem if you're doing a long hike. Like what if your clip breaks and you can't replace it until the end of the year? And I'm not a person who sews, like I'm not super handy in this way. So I wouldn't know what to replace it with, right? If I can't get a piece from the company. But anyway, so I let them know and they ended up sending me a brand new chest strap since I couldn't get that specific piece that I needed. So it includes a brand new clip, obviously. It doesn't have the whistle anymore though. Like my other one has a whistle on, which I like as a safety feature. I've never had to use it luckily, but I really like the option of like, I could use the emergency whistle if I needed to. But that being said, they sent me this new chest strap. They didn't charge me for it. And they were basically like, okay, thanks for your feedback. We'll send you a one-time like new chest strap for your pack. So it's like, okay, their customer service was pretty good. I was impressed by that. But again, like they could just use a different material and not that cheap one over and over. But this does, the new chest strap that they sent me, although it doesn't have the whistle, it does feel to me to be more durable and um, it doesn't feel as flimsy. So hopefully that means this is a problem they are actually correcting in future models of the backpack. Um, but I do know that the, the replacement they sent Ibex is breaking already. So that one was super flimsy. But again, if you've had this issue with your Gossamer Gear Mariposa, please let me know down in the comments. I would be really curious if more people besides me and Ibex have had this issue, which I'm sure that they have. And I will just note that obviously I'm gonna fix my backpack and keep using that backpack, but I am not feeling, like I love the backpack so much that even though I'm really irritated with Gossamer, Gossamer gear, I wouldn't be like, don't use this backpack, it sucks. Like I still think it's a great backpack, I'm just, Irritated that the company hasn't taken care of this issue like they should have, at least as far as I know. And number four, this one is a little bit less serious and less of a heartbreak. Okay, so I have really, I have a lot of hair as, as you guys probably have noticed. And my hair is pretty temperamental. It's like wavy curly and it gets in snags really easily. It's, it's, it's quite long. And it gives me a lot of grief, especially in the backcountry when I can't condition it every day. And so I had, I switched to using a wet brush a couple of years ago, which is a detangling brush. And I was going to bring a full size wet brush, but many of you commented on one or two of my other videos saying that they make mini wet brushes and that you really like them and that I should consider bringing a mini instead. So I decided to try it. You guys, I decided to try the mini wet brush. And guess what? I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. This thing is just not, it's not powerful enough to go through my hair. It would, it takes me using this. It literally will take me like an hour to brush out my hair and get all the snags and snarls out of it. Whereas like the full size brush is like much less time. And this is just, this is also like, just kind of flimsy. Like I feel like the full size brush is like more hardy and does its job way better. So I did want to try this cause it is a lot smaller and it, you know, a little bit lighter, takes up less room. So I thought that it was a great idea. And like, you can see it's kind of like demented from using it too. It's like, it doesn't look the way it's supposed to. But anyway, so I wanted to give it a try, but it was a fail. So I guess this is really not on the wet brush. This is just, it just was not a good fit for me and my temperamental hair. 
So I think in the future, I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and bring the full size brush, even though it's a little heavier and takes up a little more room. <laughs> So yeah, those are the four items that did me dirty on the Colorado Trail. I would be curious to know which of your gear has not held up well on a long distance backpacking trip. So let me know down in the comments. And if anyone else has this same gear that I've talked about today and has had the same experience or a different experience, I'd also be curious to know that. So thank you for watching you guys. Make sure you hit subscribe if you are not already a subscriber for more hiking, backpacking, and outdoor content. Give me a follow over on Instagram at Audie Payne, A-U-D-I-P-A-Y-N-E. It's down in the show notes. And thank you for being here. I will talk to you all next time.